Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jasmine Davidson. I'm the Director of Enrollment at the Beginning and Lower School at Catlin Gable. Um, I am going to give us just a few seconds as everyone rolls in before we get started. Um, as a reminder, this is the Beginning and Lower School Admission Process Overview. If you're interested in joining the Middle School and Upper School Overview, that will be available in 30 minutes. So feel free to hang out here as well if you want. So again, my name is Jasmine Davidson. Um, on the line, we also have Jewel Sparks, the Assistant Director of Beginning and Lower School Enrollment. She's going to help with any questions that you guys may have toward the end of the webinar. We also have Mary Jakob, the Director of Financial Assistance to help avail is available to talk about any questions you have may re regarding financial assistance. And then we also have Maribeth Pasanante, our Enrollment Data Manager, so any questions you have, again, about the ins and outs of the application process in your admissions portal. So I'm gonna do, again, an overview of the process and then we'll have about 10 minutes for Q&A afterwards. So our primary points for admission within the beginning and lower school are preschool and kindergarten. Uh, at preschool, we have 20 seats usually available for our students, the, the average class sizes. And then at kindergarten, we open up another 18, 18 seats. So we have a kindergarten class of about 38 students. Um, you can see through first through fifth grade, we tend to have some open spots, maybe between two to six positions, depending on our re-enrollment. Um, and you can see here the average enrollment numbers by year. So this is historically, again, preschool and kindergarten tend to have the most number of seats because they're our primary points of entry. And then you can see at first, um, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade, we usually average about four open seats. So typically we won't know the number of seats we have available until after February 1st. Um, that's when we have an idea of who is going to be re-enrolling. Um, and at that point, we'll be able to figure out um, what that cohort would look like and what new students we'd like to bring in. So when we're thinking about the enrollment process and the um, students that we're interested in bringing into the community, we're really looking to lead with Catlin's mission and values. So we're looking for students who really embody integrity, inclusivity, and kindness. Um, we as administrators really strive to be transparent and accessible. So answering any questions that you may have um, in a prompt manner, and then also just being really transparent about what uh, our process is like. Um, we also really strive to honor the individuality of each applicant. So looking at the child as a whole um, and really getting to know them um, and their unique traits. When we're thinking about the decisions, um, we have an, an admissions committee that's created to help look at all of the applicants. Typically that's made up of faculty and staff. We want to have a number of perspectives that are in the room when we're looking at creating cohorts. Um, and together we will review all of the applications and then discuss the candidates. So we always strive to have the most diverse cohorts as possible. So that means not just uh, racially, culturally, religiously, but we're also looking at um, learning needs that may exist within students, uh, financial assistance, family affiliations. So all of that stuff is really important because we wanna make sure students are exposed to di a diverse number of learners and people uh, while also making sure that our community stays, stays rich um, with the people that we're bringing in. As far as me, I'm playing more of an advisory role with these admissions committees. So I'm really there just to guide, um, provide feedback and provide any insight where I can. When we look at the applications, we're looking for the potential for student success, um, the potential to enrich the community, and then also the child and family alignment with the values. So really we wanna make sure that we can provide uh, the best um, educational social experience for the children. Um, so it's really making sure that we, not only is the child a good fit for us, but making sure that we're a good fit for the child. And as I had mentioned, when we're also looking at applicants, there are other considerations. Um, some would be our, what's within our financial assistant budget, um, affiliations, so whether or not parents are uh, alumni of the school, if they are um, 
siblings who are affiliated with the school, um, and overall also ensuring that we have the support available for the students we are enrolling. So there are three types of admissions decisions. One is the offer of admissions. So obviously this is when um, families are invited to join the community. Um, it's an opportunity to ask any final questions. And ultimately this is the time for you to decide if this is what you want for your family, if this is the best fit. Uh, the second decision could be the wait pool. So this is not a ranked list. This is just a pool of students. Um, and you can have the, uh, you would have the opportunity actually to have an op offer all the way up until school starts. So let's say you are uh, weighted in March, there's a potential that a seat could open up for you in August. And then the last decision is uh, the not this year decision, which obviously is the hardest um, decision to make. But please note that if if the event, if you do end up getting this decision, it's only for this upcoming year. So that would not uh, be any factor in your application for the following year. So just a review of our application timeline. Um, so this month, actually this Sunday, we have our open house coming up on the 22nd from one to 4 p.m. We strongly encourage you to come onto campus if you are able. This is a really great opportunity for you to get inside the classrooms, meet the teachers, hear more about their philosophy, their curriculum, also learn about the um, beginning and lower school, school leadership. You'll hear from our assistant head and our head of school. Um, and also like, this is a great way too of just getting in a space, getting a feel for it, seeing, seeing if you can envision your child here at Catlin. Um, starting in November, November 1st, you can start to submit your teacher evaluations. Uh, we ask that you submit at least one you can submit up to two, but one is fine as well. Um, if for some reason you are not able to provide a teacher evaluation, you can email us and we can discuss about the potential of having that waived. We also recommend that during this time, you come onto campus and take a tour if you haven't done that already. Um, schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me if you haven't done that already. Um, and this is just an opportunity also to do some research, uh, learn more about the school and see if it would be a good fit. In December, this is when you can start submitting your video snapshots for preschool and kindergarten if you haven't done so already. Um, have your students answer for third through fifth grade, answer any questions that they, um, in our admissions portal, submit their writing samples. Um, so again, just really prepping the, the application. Our early Eagle deadline is December 14th. So this is a way to get 50% off your application fee. Um, otherwise, the final deadline would be January 18th. So this would also include your financial assistance deadline is on um, January 18th as well. Um, the other big date in January would be the preschool uh, through first grade visit and play day. Um, so that's when we invite students onto campus. They will have an opportunity to work in small groups with teachers. Um, Typically, our students are divided into groups of between 10 to 14, depending on the number of students who are applying to the program. And they'll have an hour, essentially, to work with teachers. And it will, it will really mimic what a, an hour at school looks like. So they'll have an opportunity for circle time, setting expectations. They'll be doing some one-on-one -on -one assessments with math and literacy, and then have a lot of time to play uh, amongst their peers who are there. Um, also, this is when, again, the writing sample for grades three through five would be submitted if you haven't done that already. In February, we'll start our um, visit day for second through fifth grade on February 2nd. So that's going to be really similar to the first, our preschool through first visit day. So students will be organized into, um, into groups based on their grade levels, have an opportunity to meet the teachers, work with the teachers, have some assessments in math and literacy. And then it's also a feel for our teachers to get to know your children. In February, that's when our admission committee meets. We'll be reviewing all of our applications. And by March on the 8th, that's when we'll make decisions. So it'll come out via email. Um, and then you have about two weeks to decide, do your research um, and choose whether or not you'd like to accept. Um, so another rundown of our application is, again, we have our tours and conversations. So for all of our beginning school um, students, so preschool and kindergarten, you're required to take a campus tour. So if you haven't done so already, we highly encourage you to sign up. We have tons of availability throughout the fall. 
Um, for our lower school applicants, you are not required to take a tour. However, this year you are required to do a virtual one-on-one -on -one conversation with me. It's just my way of ensuring that the application process remains equitable, that I'm having an opportunity to get to meet all of the families um, of students who are applying. And if you'd like, we can also do an in-person conversation. I'm happy to accommodate that as well. Um, again, after November 1st, uh, the portal will open up for teacher evaluations. So you can just send, um, send the link directly to the teachers and they'll submit it and it will be uploaded in our admissions portal. We also ask for your school records, if possible, the last two years. Um, and typically when you submit those, we on our end have to manually um, acknowledge that we have received them. So it could take about a week to see your admissions portal updated. Our video snapshot is for our preschool through kindergarten applicants. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. And then a writing sample for our third through fifth grade applicants. Um, what we like to see is preferably a handwritten um, response. We, we have a question posted for them. Um, and so ideally it would be a file upload of something that they had written in response to our question. Again, student visit days for preschool through first grade is January 27th. And then second through fifth grade is February 2nd. So for our video snapshots, this is just a one quick video. We call it the express video. Um, this is something that had come up during the pandemic and we found that it was actually a really insightful piece of information, a, a really nice authentic insight into your child's life. Um, and so we decided that we wanted to continue that process. So your students will be asked or your child will be asked to draw a picture. Um, and really this is just our way of getting to see your child in their space, um, feeling comfortable doing something that is uh, very authentic to them. So there really isn't a lot of pressure. We don't have a lot of rules on what we're looking for, but really it's just a way for your child to have their own traits shine um, and for us to see what your child is like when they're in a space that they feel most comfortable. If you have any additional questions about specifications, um, all of that is outlined in your admissions portal. Okay, so finally, the last thing before we open up for Q&A is our upcoming events. So again, we have open house this October from 1 to 4 p.m. We strongly encourage you to come visit, um, come to campus, meet our teachers, be in the spaces. Um, it's such a beautiful campus and such a fun event. There's gonna be music, there'll be um, speakers, You'll have an opportunity to meet our family affiliation groups that will be set up um, in our barn. And we also have an equity inclusion um, seminar, also questions on financial assistance. It's really the whole gamut of whatever you may need to know will be housed at Open House. So it's a really big event. We strongly encourage you to join. Um, the next event following will be the beginning in lower school at a glance. So this is a one hour event that takes place on Wednesday, December 6th from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. And this is typically uh, a very fun and informative panel for, um, for parents who are interested in learning directly from the teachers. So we have teacher representations from grades preschool through fifth, um, and it's an opportunity to ask questions and really get to hear what they have to say. So that's um, the general, the general um, run of show for that day. Again, we have our preschool through first grade visit day on January 27th. So we will be emailing you ahead of time once your application is complete and submitted a one hour block between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. for when we'd like you and your child to come onto campus. Again, the same will take place on February 2nd for second through fifth grade from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. So I have Jewel Sparks on the line here. She's going to help read out some of the questions. Um, I'm going to do my best to answer them. I am just slowly moving into my fourth week at Catlin. So I'm still learning a lot of information. So Jewel's going to help me um, try to try to answer all of your questions. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Jasmine. That was such a great um, presentation of the enrollment process. Um, let's see, I think, can y'all, I don't know if you can see me, but that's okay. I'm here. Hello. Um, so, so I the first, okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks folks. 
<laughs> okay, so one of the questions is, is there anything required for second grade applicants since preschool through kindergarten has a video snapshot and grades three through five have a writing sample? That's a great question. So Julie, you can help me with this one because from my understanding that we are not requiring videos for our first and second grade applicants, is that correct? Uh, no, we are not requiring videos for um, first through fifth grade. Um, so no additional pieces are required except for the visit day for first and second grade. Um, uh, the next question is, will we, will we be sending out this deck? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. We're actually going to post this. I realized too, when I was talking, and so I apologize everyone that I might've been moving quickly. Um, so we are going to post this on our, probably on, on our application page. We're going to find a home for that after um, the webinar today. And this is also being requ uh, recorded. So the, the um, recording should be available in about a week as well. Thank you. Uh, next question is about basically out of cycle visiting. Uh, so for families who are at, living out of town and re relocating um, past the deadline of January 18th, is it possible to manage the application process from a distance? What does that process look like? Yes, that's a great question. So that's something Jill and I were talking about this morning. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a lot of, a fair number of out of um, state applicants uh, or out of country applicants. And so there are workarounds for us um, to work with you, especially if you're not going to be on campus for the visit days. So if you aren't, I, my first request is that you let me and Jewel know that you are um, not in the area. And then we're going to waive your campus tour. So you will not be required to take that. And then we'll make sure that in your admissions portal, you are given access to a one-on-one -on -one virtual conversation with me. Um, so that would be the other component that would be a requirement of your um, application. And we'll just make sure that's virtual. And then, so if your child, depending on what grade your child is in, there are different, um, I guess, regulations that would be changed. So rather than the visit day um, for, I believe, preschool and kindergarten, you would be uploading two additional videos. Um, so in addition to the express videos, you would also be uploading a video for sorting, which is a math video, and then movement. So how the child um, kind of plays big body movements. In, and in that admissions portal, there'll also be more details about what we're looking for. And then I believe th first through, Julie, maybe you can help me out here. I want to say first through second. Or actually, I'm going to let you speak on the, uh, the lower school because I know yeah. that there were additional... <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So um, essentially from first through fifth grade, there will be videos added. The content of the videos will vary based off of the, the grade level. And then for um, third, fourth and fifth grade students at that age, um, they have a little bit more personality and we want to get to know who they are as a student and see how they um, kind of mesh with the cohort. So uh, we'll have a group Zoom session with the students and um, all of the out of, we call them out of cycle students um, with Jasmine and um, it'll be a fun time. Um, so yeah, that's, you, yeah, of course. Uh, and again, what we just talked about was for out of cycle visitors. Yeah. So students who are living out of state or out of the country, or maybe you live, let's say at Cannon Beach and it's difficult for you to get here, um, you know, on the 27th of January or February 2nd for the visit days. So the next question I see, um, I'll just answer this one. The question is, will the at a glance event be in person or Zoom? So that will be in person. We will have live streaming available. Um, and then we'll also, I believe we'll, we'll try to record it as well. Um, but if not recording, we'll definitely have live stream available. Um, will families be penalized if they decide not to go forward with entering the school if they get accepted, but are thinking about applying again in the future? No, of course not. I mean, we're so happy. We want you to do what is best for your family. And so maybe this year, it doesn't make sense for you guys, but you want to apply next year. We are so happy to welcome you back to apply. Um, we'll see what the cohort looks like. Obviously, um, the you know, the cohort may be different, but no, you will not be penalized at all. Again, it's it's a personal choice for your family and what makes sense for you guys at that time. 
Um, the next question is about school records. Um, so how can folks submit the records? Is it through the portal? I'm gonna let Maribeth uh, come and speak to this, who's on the call. Hi everyone. Um, in the admission portal under the school records application checklist item, you will find a link that goes to a page that has instructions um, for what kinds of records we're looking for, depending on your apply grade. And then it has a form. So you will gather those records from your school or your personal files. And then you can submit them online via that form. And you don't have to do them all at once. You can do each required um, year of records separately if you need to do that. Um, but there are instructions and a form linked to in the admission portal. Thanks, Maribeth. Um, there's quite a few questions. So uh, I'm going to go through, let's see. Uh, what does a teacher evaluation look like for a kindergartner applicant? Um, and That's I could, a great, yeah, Julie, you can speak to that. Yeah, I'll speak to that. So um, basically student, um, the teacher evaluation is what we call it. That is sent, it is a very similar form across all of the divisions. We're looking at social emotional learning, um, um, cognitive ability, um, how the student interacts with peers, um, partnership with the school, et cetera. Um, we can't give you the exact logistics of what the questions are that are asked on there, um, but I will affirm you that most of the teacher recommendations or evaluations are very positive and um, highlight students. And it really is just an opportunity for us to get to know the student uh, through the eyes of their current teacher. Um, just to give us like a holistic approach of the student, right? We have the student videos and the visit day to see the student's perspective. We have the parent um, questions, um, parent guardian questions to give us that perspective. And then we have the teacher perspective as well. Again, a holistic view of the student. Um, this is this next question is about acceptance rate. Uh, what is our acceptance rate? Yes, yeah, so for first or so preschool, the acceptance rate is usually about around 30%. Um, and then it slightly drops a little bit as the grades, again, because our primary points of entry, we only have two primary points of entry within the beginning and lower school. Um, within the kindergarten, it goes down to 27%. Um, so it usually hovers around there. I will say just for full transparency, first and fifth grade are our most competitive. And that's typically because um, Again, kindergarten is a primary point of entry. And then at the middle school, sixth grade is a primary point of entry. So uh, for first and fifth grade, it's usually about a 13% acceptance rate. Thank you. Uh, what does the weight pool look like? Um, are there a lot of people in the weight pool? Um, Jewel, I'm gonna let you answer this one because I think you had more experience with this last year. Yeah, no worries. So I think the weight pool really just depends. Um, the weight pool really is um, what it like. It's we. It's sorry. <laughs> We'd love to enroll every every student that's in the weight pool for the most part. Like we find admissible. At the end of the day, we only have so many spots, and so with the weight pool, um, from year to year the number of students who are in it really does vary. Um, and so I can't give you an exact amount of what it looks like. I would say of the students, we we definitely weight pool more students than we deny. Um, but if the student is not admissible, we will send a very kind letter saying, um, this year may not be the year, but the following years, um, we encourage you to apply. Um, so I know that wasn't the answer you're probably looking for, but it really just depends year to year what the weight pool looks like. I think, so we have a five minutes left. Um, I think that leaves yeah. us maybe time for two more questions. Okay. Um, this one is a very short question, but the question is, can we bring our children to open house? Unfortunately, um, we cannot bring your children to open house. Um, there's not many activities for students to participate in at open house. Um, and, there's a lot of information heavy things on that day. So it might be a little dry for them. Um, 
And I will also add that our camp, because our campus is so kid friendly, we have an amazing playground. Also, our classrooms are obviously set up for children, that it's actually a lot more conducive for the teachers and the staff there that we don't have children just so we can stay, um, you know, continue talking about business, you know, just so we can really focus on what the conversation is at hand. Great. Um. So there was a question about the sibling policy. Uh, the question is just, has our sibling policy changed? Um, I'm not sure what is in reference to historically, um, but I will say that we look at every single applicant as an individual, uh, regardless of affiliation. Um, and so obviously there are students who are applying who have siblings at the school and we want, we really want to keep families together. However, we also want to consider the diversity of the cohort and who's applying and what's available. Um, and so that is something that we consider. Um, I'm not sure what the policy may have been historically, but again, um, that's something that we are mindful of, um, but we are really looking at the individual individuality of each applicant. Yes. Um... I'm gonna answer a quick question about report cards. Uh, someone's student goes to a Montessori school with no formal report cards. Please just send us the uh, comments that um, are on that are given by the Montessori school. If your school doesn't provide any comments or grades or any type of evaluation of your student, um, please reach out to us individually and we'll contact, uh, we'll let you know next steps regarding that. Um, for the snapshot expectations, the question is, shall we record our kids just drawing or also interacting with us? Um, this is all explained in the portal. So please check out the portal. There's uh, detailed um, instructions on what questions would be great to ask. Um, it's not just a video of them drawing. Uh, they'll draw something and then they will interact with you. Um, let's see, can you speak to it? Okay, let's see. Are families who can visit in person prioritized in the application? Uh, no, we want to make sure that this is fair and equal for all applicants. Um, some applicants are not able to come to campus for different reasons. Um, and so that is not a priority. We make sure that, again, we want to make sure that this application process is as equitable as possible. So we don't put any priority over one thing or another. Thank you. There are uh, two or must the, oh, must the kid finish the task within two minutes? Nope, if you need to take a little bit extra time, please, that's fine. It's not a strict two minutes, um, but please don't make it 10 minutes because we have to review many <laughs> of these um, videos. Um, there are two kind of longer questions um, and we can follow up with folks too. So one of them is regarding um, speaking to why the preschool through first grade will be doing um, what they'll be doing during the hour um, and will they will there be anything specific uh, with regards to the visit day we will be having another visit day Q&A session so we can actually speak more to that in January but the short answer is um, there will be doing a lot of playing with toys interacting with peers there's going to be group activities going on as well and then opportunities to also look at um, literacy and some basic math skills there as well. Um, and then the last question was around, can you discuss your diversity statistics, which races, ethnicities are represented at CGS? And I will let Jasmine speak to this. Oh, one. I would say Jewel, actually, oh. Jewel is our family affiliation coordinator, and she works very close within the equity and inclusion office. So Jewel, I would love for you to answer this. I think that if there's anyone who knows the most about it, it would be you. Yes. Um, so off the top of my head, I'm going to be honest, I don't know the percentages. They We yeah, do have them. Like maybe five seconds. Um, sorry. Uh, yes, sorry. I don't, I share an office with quite a few folks. <laughs> um, so um, with regards to our percentages, I don't know them off the top of my head, but we have many races and ethnicities represented at Catlin Gable School. Um, I will say that we have predominantly multiracial identifying students at this at the school. And with that being said, um, we have, if you are within a marginalized group, um, we have 
affinity groups, not just for students, but for parent guardians as well, so that folks can find their community and get to know each other. So part of my role is to actually help foster those spaces and provide sports for families and students um, who are in um, marginalized, historically marginalized um, ethnic groups. And Thank you. We can have more conversations about that later if you reach out to me, and I'd be happy to have that, those conversations. Awesome. So we are at time. I just want to honor our 30 minute um, time period. So thank you all so much for joining. Uh, we are really looking forward to seeing you at Open House. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or Jewel directly. We're happy to um, answer anything or provide any support. And if we haven't met in person yet, we're very much looking to forward to either meeting you in person or meeting you virtually. So thank you so much again. I uh, hope you have a great, wonderful day.